Hi, welcome back to the series of Functional Safety Sessions. I am Tota Krishna Hema, your Functional Safety Expert. So today we would like to talk about safety goal from ISO 26262 Part 3. So I would like to recap or revise on item definition part. So what is what exactly the item is? Item is a system or a group of system or a series of system I can say like which is very important to implement a function at a vehicle level. For example, anti-lock braking system is an is one of the items and uh, adaptive cruise control is one of the item and uh, uh, lane departure warning is another item. So what does a typical item definition will have or should have in this? Like it will have its own, the item name in it, like ABS and its description. So what is its major functionality? Something like that. An item belongs to which technology? Say it is an electronic part or it is an electronic item, it is an electrical item or it is a mechanical item. So there will be a um, categorization of item will be there in that and this it will have internal and external interfaces uh, to which this particular item is interfacing with that means its communication its relation and its relation and its control over the other items or components it will have and safety requirements and known failure modes also it will have and the functional dependency of item on other items also it will have so what would be the next step for item definition so as uh, as soon as the item definition gets over the safety life cycle it'll get kick off so uh, one thing we can say is like uh, the more detailed the item definition is or so we can have a better hara in place so it's like it will be easy for the safety engineer or the safety consultant to do HARA when the item definition is more in detail. So at this particular safety life cycle initiation phase, we will decide on whether this particular item is a new item which needs to be developed from a scratch or need modifications to the existing item uh, and what are the phases of the life cycle is applicable to this particular development of an item. So we would decide on what are the essential steps or the phases to be applied or to be carried out for this particular item and also prioritize them. So after item definition and safety life cycle initiation, so we need to find out the malfunctions of an item. So the, fi the finding out of malfunction uh, of an item is uh, can be done uh, with HAZOP or FDA. So here I am trying to explain or summarize HAZOP, but I did a detailed video on HAZOP. You can find it in cards uh, in your right top corner. HAZOP is hazard and operability analysis, which helps us to identify the malfunctions of an item. So which is under scope, it may be one singular item or it may be multiple items also by considering operational scenarios, operational modes, environmental conditions, etc. So HAZOP uh, thinks that uh, the potential hazard is caused by a deviation from the intended operation of a system or the functionality of a system. So it uses certain guide words or which is very similar to our keywords, uh, which denotes search deviations. So it, there will be a common guide word for a set of deviations, something like that. So, so I would like to summarize HARA also. So for the detailed HARA video, you can click on the top uh, displaying card, top right corner of, your, of this video. Uh, this HARA is hazard as analysis and risk assessment. So each and every hazard which is identified or derived during, hazard, during HARA will have three categories of uh, uh, three categories that is exposure, controllability, severity. So with these three factors, like we can uh, get to know this particular hazard is of which ASL level and what safety goal we can take kind of. Uh, so, and uh, the has, for has, HARA, there are two different outputs are there. One is SL value we will get from HARA. And the second thing is 
safety goal we will get as an output so the next thing is safety goal safety goals are the high level safety requirements of an item so it's like safety goals helps us to derive the functional functional safety requirements fsr or fsc is the next step for this uh, safety goals okay and F safety goals are derived by considering each and every potential hazards that may lead to the failure of a item or component so each safety goal will have its own asil and its own requirement which helps uh, which helps the vehicle to be in safe state or to bring the vehicle to be in safe state safety goal will have these following activities so first thing as a first thing we need to identify all relevant situations like operational scenarios operational modes and environmental conditions the second thing is we need to identify all hazards all relevant hazards so the the next thing is we need to combine both hazards and and uh, hazards and situations together to hazardous events so then we need to classify hazard hazardous events and we need to identify safety goals which covers all hazardous events so after that like we need to verify the completeness and consistency of the hazard of of the safety goals like which which is covering all hazardous events so based on the analysis of hazardous events and analysis depending on the severity exposure and controllability of the hazards safety goals are formulated so many hazards of any of an many hazards of an atom are derived during hara that means uh, each and every hara will have multiple hazards so each ha each hazard uh, will have the different asil values so uh, which is depending on the severity exposure and controllability so like the safety goal will in turn will deal with multiple hazard is even so the highest asl value will be applicable for the safety goal here are the examples for safety goals like two examples have given here so these two examples are are not relevant but however like it gives you a wider picture than the one example so the first thing is hazard is electric shock to driver operating scenario is curvy road driving situation is driving De deviation is unintended vehicle behavior possible cause is manual exposure to unprotected hc battery consequences is driver may go panic can be able to apply brakes or steering control severity is s3 exposure is e1 controllability c3 so sl sl value is a sl a id is uh so abc is a product name say safety goal 1 okay and the safety goal requirement is prevent the electric shock like safe state may be uh the disconnect hv battery uh driver warning driver take over so fttti is uh, fall to safety violation is system has to maintain operation for 1 to 2 seconds before driver control so the second example is given here as complete loss of steering functionality so in case of operating scenario is curvy road driving situation is driving and deviation is unintended vehicle behavior activation of possible causes activation of line departure warning so consequences are driver loses 100% control on vehicle steering so here i consider the maximum uh, percentage of uh, of loss of control but there will be 10% 20% 30% and all but if i consider uh, the maximum thing then i can get sld so i just want to show up that example to you so s3 is a severity example uh, sorry exposure is e4 and controllability c3 as a result it led to sld uh, and this is a unique identification of safety goal id that is abc underscore sg underscore 02 safety goal requirement is driver should be able to cancel line departure warning activation by moving steering in contractive way okay and stay safe state is driver warning driver take over uh, so uh, this 
the next thing is uh, like system has to warn driver prior to line lane departure warning activation so hope you got this concept so if you like this concept click on the like button if you want for the more automotive videos subscribe to my channel so if you have any doubts write to me at ask at gmail.com thank you